Well, the president is coming to the meeting on the backdrop of quite um, extreme rhetoric from Israel now about the Iran question. There's been a sort of a new wave of statements, especially from Defense Minister Barak, about a closing window of opportunity for a military strike against the Iranian nuclear program should a strike be needed. And the rationale is that soon the program might be immune to aerial strikes, and therefore if a strike is ever needed, it might have to happen soon and possibly this spring or summer when weather conditions allow for it. President Obama is very, very wary of such a scenario and would much prefer that Israel wait, let the international community, um, let the sanctions imposed by the international community and unilaterally by the United States take effect and, and let that play out uh, before Israel takes any kind of unilateral action. Uh, he hopes to hear from Netanyahu that Israel is committed to warning the United States before an attack, something the Israelis have um, very clearly avoided promising. Um, this also gives the United States some advantage in the sense that it is not, uh, might not be perceived as complicit with an Israeli action, but that depends on people believing the United States didn't know. The United States would rather have some kind of warning. It would rather be able to affect the timeline of the Israelis and it certainly hopes to postpone the Israeli attack, certainly within an election year. Well, Netanyahu, first and foremost, wants more coordination with the United States, an understanding of the Israeli position from the president. Ideally, he'd like to get a firm commitment from the United States that it will prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons by all means necessary, even the use of force by uh, the U.S. He's unlikely to get everything he wants, of course, and so in the interim what he hopes to achieve is a better understanding of the Israeli interest and perhaps a tacit um, acceptance by the U.S. That, the Israel might have to, that Israel might have to operate unilaterally, and if it does, the U.S. would give it diplomatic and maybe even military, co military cover otherwise. This question has been um, debated recently, and it's not clear where the United States stands. It also is not clear what the political rationale or political dynamic in the United States would be if a conflict ensued between Israel and Iran. Publicly, we're likely going to see some kind of amity between the two. We're going to see uh, some kind of declaration of, uh, of mutual understanding. Both countries are going to reaffirm what they've said before, and there's no news in this, that they both um, strongly object to nuclear, capa nuclear weapons capable Iran, and that all options are on the table, which is language that both countries have used, meaning that military, uh, the military option is still in the realm of possibility. But how much it is in the realm of possibility is very different between the two countries. It seems that this Israeli leadership is much more ready to, um, to countenance the possibility of using military force, although Israel will pay a lot of the price, much more so than the current uh, administration in the United States. The precise details of this kind of calibration and how their timelines are calibrated is something that we probably won't hear publicly, but it will have very deep consequences for the coming year and perhaps more.